Hello, I'm Liam and welcome to my May allotment tour. The weather may have been bad over the last few weeks, but things have really progressed here down on the plot. So let's take a look. Highlights of this month's tour include the blueberries which are in flower, the onion sets that have germinated, the potatoes that are now coming through, a row of peas that I planted out a few days ago, broccoli that is still in great condition, the perpetual spinach which is really thriving now, a massive rhubarb plant which is only one year old, leeks that I have transplanted here for their flowers. Inside the fruit cage the plants are looking in great condition, with fruit forming on all the plants including the gooseberries, black currants and red currants. Masses of flowers on the strawberry plants. The hybrid berries are still standing upright thanks to their new supports. The progress of the line of raspberry canes. It's a great sign of health. At their foot, new canes are shooting up. The dahlias are germinating, both those in pots and those that are left in the ground over winter. I've sown the broccoli that I hope to harvest in 2022. The edible flower bed has also started to germinate. Squash, cucumbers and courgette are all growing strongly in the polytunnel. The French beans are also looking good too and the tomato plants that I transplanted into the polytunnel a few weeks ago and they're now looking really really good with some even in flower. Walking back to the front of the plot you may notice that the grass is getting a little long. With the wet weather I found it difficult to find the time to come down here and cut the grass. It's also the time of year that dandelions are really starting to flower with the potential to spread their seed all over the plot. Dandelions may be good to look at and fun to blow their seeds off, but the trouble with them is that they seed freely, potentially giving a weeding job for the rest of the summer. To reduce the amount of grass I need to cut, my preference is to use prepared paths between raised beds on the plot. I've created a video about how I created these. It is more work at the beginning, but I've found the investment has really paid off in the amount of time it saves me. My blueberry bushes are at the front of the plot and they haven't needed any care over the last few weeks. In a usual warm spring I water them about once a week. I find that my blueberry plants do a lot better when the roots are not allowed to dry out, but there's been no need to do this over the last few weeks with the cold and wet weather. On the plot I have a couple of different varieties of blueberries and I've noticed they're at quite different stages of their development. This plant here is covered in flowers, I hope this is coming out on the camera. There's some here and more up here as an example. Whilst my bush at the end of the row, I'll just show that now. This bush here has almost entirely stopped flowering and is actually starting to form fruit. It's great to see that because with the cold spring, there's been frequent frosts down here for over the last few weeks. But that looks all good to me. It's also good with the onion sets I planted a few weeks ago. I think the wet weather has helped their germination. And I'm just looking now to see if I can see any gaps. And it looks like 100% of the onion sets have germinated, which is great. I'm using biodegradable weed fabric to reduce the amount of weeding work I need to do. At this time of year, there are still some weeds that can form in the gaps. So it doesn't reduce the weeding work entirely but nevertheless saves me a good deal of time. When I used to do that, I was constantly damaging the onions by mistake. I'm really pleased with how the garlic is looking. The wet weather seems to have helped thicken the stems. If I just show that now. This stem here is by no means the thickest of the garlic, but it's a fairly standard example. The stem is actually a little bit thicker than the width of my finger. If the stem's swelling, I hope that means that the bulb beneath the ground is swelling too. With the plants looking like this, it could be a really good harvest this year. If you haven't seen my other allotment tour videos, I planted this garlic in October last year, which has allowed it to catch the really good weather this year to continue its growth, hopefully bringing in a bigger and earlier harvest compared to planting in the spring. I like to plant my potatoes relatively late compared to some people, planting them at Easter time and also quite deep in a trench, almost six to nine inches deep. By doing that I hope they emerge after the risk of the last frost has passed. This year I'm not sure of whether that's going to happen but it may be possible to see here if I just clear away 
some of the earth on top of them. The shoots are beginning to emerge. I'm always excited to see that happen and always a bit relieved too because waiting for the potatoes can take several weeks for them to come up. They are quite small at the moment and if I scan across the row, not all the plants have come up yet. The peas I planted in small pots in the polytunnel and they've been growing nicely there for the last few weeks. The plants are about six to nine inches in height and I waited to plant them out for a couple of reasons. The first is that I found planting peas out too soon make them an attractive target for birds and slugs who like to eat their way through the young leaves and stems. But when the plants are a little bit larger, I think they're more chewy and they tend to be left alone more. The second reason is that peas don't particularly like to be transplanted. And I reckon by transplanting the plants when they're a little bit larger, it reduces the risk of the plants dying through the transplanting process. I don't disturb the roots in any way. If I have two to three plants in a pot, like I have over here, not trying to separate the plants, that way the roots don't get to be disturbed and I think the plants are happier that way. This is a sugar pot variety and I've been lucky enough to already start to harvest the plants I've got growing at home. I've only got six broccoli plants down here at the plot but they've given me at least one big picking a week over the last six weeks. I think the flavour is so much better to the broccoli that you can buy in the supermarket. Absolutely delicious. A few of the heads though have started to flower. So what happens is the broccoli heads are actually flower buds and then out of the flower buds come these really pretty yellow flowers. To continue the harvest it's probably best to pick those off but I do quite like looking at them so I tend to leave them on the plants. The yellow flowers may be pretty but I also think the broccoli heads themselves are really good to look at as well as being great to eat. The perpetual spinach has been a big success. I sowed this in the autumn and the plants have overwintered and now they're in full leaf at a time when very little else is ready to be harvested on the plot. I have noticed that a few of the plants are sending up vertical stems which I suspect may turn out to be flower buds. So what I'm going to do is that if I see that happening here I'm just going to pick off the central stem and I hope by doing that it will encourage the plant to bush out and not run to seed. I'm going to reach into this plant and do that too. Actually they look as though flowers might be emerging there. So that's exactly what's happening. I'll pick that one off too. Hopefully that will stop the plants running to seed. Between the two rows of perpetual spinach I have this central row and in that space in the last week or so I've sowed some spring onion seeds and on the other side some Florence fennel. Now the Florence fennel seed was quite old, maybe four years past its best before date, but I've sown it anyway, I just have to see what happens. I left these dahlia tubers in the ground over winter. Last summer the plants provided a stunning display of orange fire coloured flowers. As they're now coming up, it's a good time to lift and divide them to make new plants. To divide the dahlia, I'm going to dig down quite deep to dig the plant up. These plants grew really, really big last year. So there are probably quite a few tubers. Right, they look as though they're coming up to me. There we go, let's take a look. Oh, there are absolutely lots here to have a go at. Probably the easiest ones to try and separate are those at the side just here. I think what I'll do is to see if I can put a spade through. Ah, there we go, I think that's gone through nicely. Now I think that's going to make a really healthy plant. What I'm going to do is to pop them up in a nice big pot. I've got this one prepared already. This pot has already got some moist compost at the bottom. I'll just plant that one inside. I'm going to remove this tuber here so it's got more room to fit in the pot and that one's got a shoot coming out of it so that's another plant just there. That fits much more easily inside the pot now. So I'll just place that one inside and carefully cover it with some soil. 
actually what I may do is to get some fresh compost. I'm just going to fill the pot up with the compost. And there we have it, one new dahlia plant. I'm going to finish off by giving it some water. The rhubarb plant is thriving this year and I'm very happy about that. I mentioned earlier that the plant is only a year old. I didn't pick it at all last year and over the winter I gave it a mulch of well rotted manure and I think that combination has really helped the plant to thrive. Aside from crumbles, I think rhubarb makes a great compote and I mix it in with organic yoghurt to make a delicious treat for breakfast. A week or so back I had my last harvest of leeks but I noticed when picking them that a few of the plants had developed their flower stems. Just like this one here. Now I wanted to clear the leek bed for another crop. So what I did was I transplanted a few leeks and planted them here. And what I hope will happen is they'll be a magnet for bees. And these plants are right outside my fruit cage. But really I'm doing it because I think they look good. I keep the strawberry bed covered with a wire mesh, otherwise the wildlife here will eat the harvest. But I'm now going to remove the mesh to take a look at the plants underneath. And there we go, that's the mesh removed. It's much easier to see the plants now. Here's a great example here. That plant is covered in flowers. And along here too. This is looking really promising for the harvest to come. It would be great to have some sunny weather though to sweeten the fruit. One of the jobs I am going to do on the strawberry beds over the next few days is to remove this biodegradable plastic film that I put down when I planted the bed. I was using the film to suppress weed growth in the first year and in its place I will surround the plants with straw. That will help keep moisture in the soil, suppress weed growth and also keep the fruit clean. The apple tree has blossomed over the last few weeks and it's always great to see the blossom. There's a few remaining flowers at the top there. One of the most attractive sights on the allotment in the entire year. But what is also good to see is that just here is that some fruit has started to set. That's a really great sign. Inside the fruit cage, this is the biggest gooseberry plant I have. Absolutely massive and looking in great condition. It's a number of years old now. I've lost count how old. At least five years old, if not a little bit more. And just at the front here, if I pull back that branch, it may be possible to see the tiny gooseberries forming. That's a reminder for me that I need to fix the net all around the edge of the fruit cage to make sure no animals get in. The gooseberries are much too small for me to eat, but the wildlife will gobble them up if they get access to it. This time of year, it's not uncommon to hear people say that all their fruit has disappeared off the bush. My black currant plant is looking less healthy. There are some branches here on the left hand side which are completely out of leaf. Now I did have an issue with blackberry regression virus and what I did is I gave it a really good prune to try and remove the problem. Some of the branches here on the left hand side are showing absolutely no growth. They look dead. But the plants which are in leaf are looking very healthy. So that's a good sign. And there is some fruit forming on the plant. If I just pull these leaves back, it may be possible to see. I'm hoping there will be a harvest this year, but perhaps a lot smaller than in previous years. No such problem on the red currant bush. What I do find with this red currant bush is that some of the branches grow horizontally. What I may need to do is to support stems like this one. It may be possible to see lots of fruit are forming underneath and the weight of the fruit drags the branches down. What I really want to avoid is that the fruit actually touching the ground, which makes them dirty, even though I've got all the wood chip already around the base. And on the other side of the fruit cage, I have a couple more gooseberry plants, like the one at the front of the fruit cage. They're looking very, very healthy this year. At least something's enjoying the rain. I have a row of hybrid berries. This is my tabu plant. Perhaps not the most attractive plant to look at. And maybe just here, I think that could be the first flower forming. From memory compared to previous years, I think the plant is a few weeks back compared to what it normally is. I think it'll be quite a late harvest this year owing to the cold weather. 
Next to my potato plant, I have this loganberry plant. It's looking a similar story. The plant is in leaf, but the leaves are very small compared to when it's in full growth. And there are the first signs of small flower buds. I think here and up here are a couple of examples, but like the tabri, a little bit slow this year. And then next to the loganberry plant, I have my boysenberry plant. I'm really excited about the boysenberry plant, mainly because this looks the first year of a proper harvest. I had a handful of fruit last year, but this year the plant is probably 10 times the size. The fruit is a cross between a blackberry and a raspberry. Deliciously sweet. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with it. But the cane fruit which is doing best of all at the moment are the raspberries. I've been trying to recover the raspberry row for the last couple of years. The summer before last I completely cleared the bed except for the canes, removing all the weeds. But what I'm really pleased about is what's happening at the foot of the plants. This is an example here, quite a small cane, but already two young canes are shooting up. And this plant here is tiny and I've almost given up on it to be honest. But it's producing this really healthy looking cane emerging here. And I think that's a great sign. But the most vigorous plants of all are the canes which are nearest the sun these ones here and there are lots of new canes coming up and even more on this side if i stand back here it may be possible to see the current situation i have a number of canes but they are quite spaced apart maybe a meter apart between each clump and what i really hope happens is that they fill in the gaps looking at what's happening at the moment that could well happen this year there is much more life in the edible flower bed. I have been a little worried about it because as the name suggests, the plants are meant to be eaten. And I think slugs and snails may have been enjoying them, but it is looking good at the moment. It was a mixed bag of seed, the result of which is that I don't know what the young seedlings look like and I'm convinced I've got some weeds growing in here too. But looking at it, I'm confident that some flowers will come up. Outside the polytunnel, I'm germinating some broccoli. I've used these cocoa cubes to do that. And I'm really pleased with the result. I sowed eight seeds in total and six plants have come up already. And I'm still hopeful the other two may germinate as well. I'll allow them to get a little bit bigger and then I'll pop them on into fresh compost. And finally, finishing the tour inside the polytunnel. These tomato plants are looking good. I'm watering them a couple of times a week. They grew taller than I liked on a sunny windowsill. Because of the cold weather, I was relatively late transplanting them, but they're looking good now. They are in flower at the moment, which is a great sign of health. Also inside the polytunnel, I've got a few more heat-loving plants. I've got some very small chilli plants here. The chilli plants are growing particularly slowly. I have one cucumber plant at the moment absolutely tiny and two more pots of cucumber where the seed didn't germinate and i reckon it was just too cold for them they may have rotted in the pots before they germinated and because of that i've actually made a fresh sowing of cucumber seed in these pots here i've also got some lettuce seed in these cocoa cubes they haven't germinated yet i actually sowed the seed at the same time as i sowed the broccoli seed i think they're relatively slow the French bean plants are looking great. This is a dwarf variety. I sowed those at the same time as I sowed my pea seeds that I've already planted out. But I'm thinking of leaving the French beans in here at least another couple of weeks until it's properly warm and then I'll plant them out. They really don't like cold nights. And then lastly, I have my tray of squash. Now, I sowed a couple of seed per pot and probably by now the roots are quite well tangled into each other. If I can find the time over the next couple of days, I'll come down here and split the plants, putting them into individual pots. I'll probably leave them to mature another couple of weeks inside the polytunnel before planting them out. I find that the bigger the plants are, the less likely they are to be eaten by anything. And then lastly, just in the corner here, I have some flat leaf parsley. My plan is when they're a little bit larger, I'll plant them into a big pot and take them home. Having herbs right next to the kitchen, I think is the best place for them. And that's it. I hope you liked the tour. If you did, please let me know by hitting the like button or leaving a comment. 
And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the YouTube channel in the usual way.